Well, 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 another late show from Liverpool. Not so much late, really, but still like a late show where we don't turn up in the first half, we go a goal behind, a couple of changes are made, and then lo and behold, we win the game come the end of full time. Now, granted, it was the first leg of the semi final against Fulham at Anfield. We were down 1 0 in the first half, had plenty of chances, arguably the better team in that first half, but, you know, a couple of moments of brain farts and. Fulham take advantage. Second half, we gather ourselves, play a little bit differently. The personnel comes on, and we end up bagging ourselves two goals. Possibly could have had a couple more. Then again, Fulham could have scored themselves, but it's 2-1. But again, it's another come from behind pause, as Troops like to say. Victory for us. Now, first and foremost, Van Dyke had a issue. Uh, that's why he didn't play against Arsenal in the FA Cup, but he's back for the, uh, or he was back for the uh, semi-final and still didn't look his best. It was an error from him that led to them, uh, that being Fulham getting themselves a goal, opportunity to score and whatever, but he copped a yellow card as well. And it was for a foot stomp or a, uh, apparently a arm to the face of, was it Pereira or I think it was one of the Fulham players with the blonde hair as some of them like to have these days. And he didn't have the best first half, but I find it interesting that he stayed on the whole game, did not get subbed at all. And you thought, okay, this maybe could be a little bit, you know, suspect. If he gets another second yellow, he's off and then he's suspended uh, for the, uh, I think it still counts in the Premier League or something like that, maybe. But he'd be missing for the next game, at least against Fulham away, which is not going to be easy, which we'll get to soon. But surely he had to have discussed that with Klopp at halftime. But he stayed on. Um, obviously, it was the error for that goal. Kelleher arguably... Could have done better. A lot of people online talking about maybe, you know, Allison saves that, but who knows? It's, you know, ifs and buts. I uh, know Allison, he was on the bench. A lot of people calling for Allison to play in semi finals. Whether he plays away at Fulham is another question. Is Kelleher going to play away at Fulham and then potentially play in the final? Should we get there? Well, we will see what happens. Uh, Kanate doing the business one more time. Um, Kwanzaa being on the bench. Uh, could have brought him on for Van Dijk, as I was saying, but, you know, if they wanted to avoid a red card, but he didn't. Gomez at left back. This man uh, has been boss lately, giving 100% in every position he plays, and he will 100% earn his credit, his flowers come the end of the season with whatever happens. Playing at left back, right back, center back, doesn't matter. But the man needs his goal. But telling him to shoot every time he's on the ball from a decent distance is not going to help him. I mean, it could eventually, but let's not get that into his head because we don't want him focusing on that. But definitely, you know, big ups to Joe Gomez. Another solid game. Connor Bradley filling in for Trent. This was going to be an interesting one. Connor Bradley in for Trent. You're thinking, okay, Fulham's coming to town. It's going to be a bit of a tricky one. Uh, let's just move over to the uh, graphic here with the stats. So Bradley coming on against William, Paulinho as well, Robinson, who uh, decent left back for them, I have to say, a, a decent game. But, you know, against the 30-something-year-old William, got himself the goal, of course, but still having a decent game. Gravenberg's not really doing himself any, any favours. They will get to him soon. But he was filling in for Trent's um, solid by the mishap for William's goal. Uh, but this is how you get the experience to feature one day in the team. Of course, Trent came from the academy just like, uh, Bradley and he's going to have to gain the experience in order to know how the team plays and how to get into the squad so I have no issue with that at all um, and now was a great pass to uh, Darwin that had him had his shot saved by Leno with his um, feet smothered the ball late in the game as well but he had a decent game um, midfield the team overall probably couldn't find rhythm in that first half it's just struggled in a sense but we got there in the end. Uh, Jones was, was great in that game. He was fantastic. A solid 7, 8 out of 10 performance. If you look at it, he was just all over the place. He was fantastic. Um, and he got himself the goal via a deflection, but who cares? It's it's 1-1 you know, one, one at that point, and I don't care. Score goals any which way you can. Uh, that's what the game is about. Um, Elliot and Gravenberth got subbed in the 56 minutes. Um, Elliot seemed to be getting into his stride in that second half, but Klopp opted to sub him off and bring on Darwin Nunez and Cody Gakpo and Jota remaining in the middle position. And then you had sort of Diaz moving from that left side to the right side. Darwin taking over that left wing position, which is probably his better position. And Gakpo down the middle and then have Diaz on that right side. And it was uh, effective because the subs were the game changers. Klopp has 
been criticized for putting on the wrong players at the wrong time, disrupting the flow of the match, maybe putting on players that we don't really need. But it seems to have worked in this instance here because Nunez gets himself the assist for Gakpo and also for Jones, which to me is not really an assist. I mean, he's passed the ball almost accidentally, like bounced off of him into Jones's path and he's taken a touch, had a dribble and then had a pop at goal. I don't know. But Cody Gakpo gets himself a goal. So Cody Gakpo gets a goal. Darwin with two assists, respectively. And as I said, one's not really an assist. The one for Gakpo's goal a few minutes later, that one was a lovely ball across. And uh, Gravenberch did have that shot that went just wide, sort of like before he got subbed off, but that was pretty much it for him. Uh, Nunez, let's talk about Darwin Nunez, because this man had a fantastic little cameo. Now, if, again, using these aggregators, the, these you know, you know, foot mob and sofa score and all these others, you can say the stats sort of like don't lie. I remember the other day, Statman Dave put on something like, oh, what a fantastic game by Marcus Rashford for Manchester United against Wigan. And all the United fans and just football fans in general are thinking like, are you fucking serious? Like, did you watch Rashford? He was atrocious just because he had 10 accurate passes and a couple of shots on goal. Doesn't mean he had a good game. It wasn't explosive at all. But Darwin was. He was. He played 34 minutes, got himself two assists, one of them being a so-so assist, uh, four shots, uh, two chances created. He had three on target. Again, that header, that ball from, I think it was from Gakpo on that right wing, just floating across to Darwin and in the middle there. And man, it would have been a lovely goal, but Leno with the fantastic double palm save. Uh, shot accuracy, uh, three out of four. Had that big chance missed, which is most likely the one where Bradley puts fizzes that ball in, very Trent-esque-like into that space. And, and Darwin just gets a foot to it, but Leno comes out early and smothers the ball. And, and then you can say, uh, someone made a point of this. If Allison does that, we say, oh, that's a fantastic save from Allison. But when it happens to Nunez, we say, oh, Nunez was shit. He should have scored. So it's like you have to sometimes just say, look, it's a fantastic save. Unfortunately, just couldn't make it happen. It is what it is. But he had himself a decent game. Evidently enough, foot mob reckon he got an 8.6. And arguably the um, man of the match, I mean, for a 34 minutes cameo, make of that what you will. But he had he had a great impact on the game. Definitely had a great impact. Let me bring him up just for the sake of the, uh, the conversation. He had a great impact of the game. Now, I'll take the assists if no goals are to be had. And he was looking good on that left wing again, as I said. He is effective. I think he's got the most uh, goals and assists off the bench this season, where it's three goals and four assists or something to that effect. He's got 10 assists all season so far. So a lot of people have sort of slandered him and said he's been a trash footballer, he's no good, we should sell him, etc., etc. Now, Hassam from This Is Football, I caught the end of his stream when he was streaming the game live for the for the commentary, and he said he would give Darwin a 2 out of 10 for those two assists, and then he said, no, no I'm not going to be that bitter. Then I think he gave him a more respectable score. But my thing is, if Darwin Nunez is brought in as a striker, which he is, plays on the left wing and as a striker, those are his two positions, more effective on the left wing, why not just play him on that left wing? Why not? rotate him around the front line i we did it with 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 mane Firmino, and salah why can't we do it with with darwin with Jota or gakpo with salah whoever's playing in the middle diaz you know what i mean why can't we do it with them too he can play left and then central you can have gakpo central and then out wide you can have salah on the right and then in the middle and then you know gakpo in the middle to the right like we can do these things i don't know why why we can't maybe there's a actual tactical reason why but in my opinion i don't see why we can't but he's been good he has been good. So people saying he's had a uh, a shit last few months, I think they're just talking crap. If he's not scoring goals, he's getting assists. And when you get an assist, that means someone else scores a goal. So I'll take the assists over him doing absolutely nothing. If he's just taking shots at goal, everything is being saved, he's not really doing anything, then we're going to have to say, okay, what are we doing here with, with Darwin? But so long as he's getting assists or doing something in that match, fair enough. Now, shout out to Footy Judge Mo. With all uh, luck, timing working out, I'll be on the stream one day soon. So thank you for the um for the invite. But he had some wild people say Darwin was crap, and he needs to be sold. As I was saying, so Darwin off the left is definitely better than Darwin down the middle, as far as we can see right now. And I think some people are just spoiled for choice, and they think every player is meant to turn into Mo Salah. Doesn't matter where they play on the pitch. Unfortunately, it's just not possible. Uh, Jota looked lively, itching for himself to get a goal. Didn't. 
Diaz was so-so. Um, didn't affect the game as much after last week. Uh, McAllister getting back to speed after the injury. And would Endo have even played in this game? Would Endo have played against Arsenal? Would McAllister have rested? Would Endo have been rested for this game and McAllister played? Would McAllister have played both? Would Endo have played both? We don't know. It's just one of those things we have to question ourselves. Now, we were all over them for the first 15 to 18 minutes. They got their break via the Van Dyke error. And Killer again should have probably done a little bit better. But then you've got absolute morons and, oh, well, I don't want to say too harsh of a word, but people like this douche nozzle on screen, Jason Cundy, saying Virgil is overrated. He's had two good seasons. He's nowhere near the consistent levels of Campbell or Terry. What are they smoking at talk sports? Seriously, so Jason Cundy has got to be the biggest, bitterest fuck in the planet. Jason Cundy is what he should be called. Let's have a listen to what he has to say. We can do this, Van Dyke. He, he sometimes p- puts in displays where you go, that's a bit rubbish. That's a bit rubbish for someone... The defending like, is terrible. Yeah. Not, to, not only do he head the ball in a direction that you don't want to... You're not the, having Van Dyke, though, are I, you? I th- personally, I think he's overrated. All right? I don't think that he's anywhere near the levels consistently of the likes of Sol Campbell, John Terry, Rear I don't. I don't think he's anywhere near that level. Are you telling me Saul Campbell and Terry never had any errors or any fuck-ups or any red cards or anything like that? Are you fucking serious right now? Personally. Mm. He's had what, two good seasons. I know the injury, people will go back the injury he picked up against Everton. Yeah, that was a big in, thing. Uh, during, I think, was it during COVID? A bad injury. It was a bad, it's a terrible injury. Yeah, Pickford. Yeah, but you, you're saying like. that he was, you know, he was, he was doing it at Southampton and Celtic and John Terry yeah. Rio. Was well, doing I think that's fair, you know. You know and, for a and, long time. Yeah, and, and look, there's, no, there's no doubt that he's, he's top class, but I don't think he's in that, I don't think, if you put an all, all-time Premier League team together, he's not in that team. The fuck's this cunt waffling about? One mistake and you've come up with this shit again, talk shit at it again, shows how good he is, the fact that the whole world waits for him to make a single mistake so they can slate him. Amazing stuff. Been, someone's been saying it for years, apparently. He's literally half the reason Liverpool are top of the league. He, he's been such fantastic talk sport with the clickbait once again. Thiago Silva, Ruben Diaz and Saliba made countless mistakes this season. Nothing said. Van Dijk made his first mistake, which wasn't even all that, and they ring the bells. Yeah, Thiago has had shockers. He has had absolute shockers. And they want to say that Van Dijk has one bad era and then he's a, he's a problem. Like, look at these people. Who, who even are you? Who even are you? Doesn't even have any any team affiliation. Yeah. Rio, Terry and Campbell have a total combined points of 14. Van Dyke was, what, seven points? Eight points? Eight points away from being a Ballon d'Or winner in 2019. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Even Vincent Company apparently says Van Dyke is the best defender in the Premier League of all time. Holy fuck. Well, that's what he says. But there you go. That's what you expect from people like Jason Cundy on TalkSport. So he had a bit of a bit of a mishap and all of a sudden he's the worst player in the world. Another player which our own, every fan, uh, sorry, every team has fans like this. They're going to say one thing on Twitter and then say something else again. And it's just like, man, can we just like, just chill a little bit and just relax and stop being reactionary? Because Graven Birch didn't have his best game. Now you can argue and say he hasn't had that many of a great game over the last few weeks. I thought he was decent against Arsenal. He's had some decent appearances in the Europa League. Premier League, okay, so-so, start, stop, etc., etc. But he wasn't brought in to be the new box-to-box, okay? Again, he's still going to take time to get into everything. You can have a good couple of games, you have a bit of a stutter, and then whatever happens. But you get shit like this again on on, on Twitter right now. Apparently, uh, LFC Laurie, no idea who this person is, big Twitter account apparently, where they got uh, about 40,000, 39,000 followers, sorry. On the 26th of November, I rate Jones, but that left center mid spot belongs to Graven Burks. But Graven Burke, I am in awe. But then just 13 hours ago, the more I watch Graven Burke, the more it makes sense that Bayern are willing to let him go after just a season. Interesting, that. Interesting. Laurie, you love to overreact, I swear to God. So you're just going to give up on him. We saw he has potential. <laughs> Reminds you of someone Henderson. Look, he's, he's no Jordan Henderson, at least in the moment anyways. It's like, bro, why are we so reactionary? Every team has fans like this. Why are we like this? Why are we like this? Why do we expect players to come in and just be, you know, like just straight 10 out of 10s and goals and assists every game they play? Do people understand players are coming into a new system? Yes, he's been here for a few months, 
But look at Fabinho when he came in. He was arguably the best defensive mid in the league, but it took him, what, six months to really get into it? Look at Endo come in after three or four games. People are saying, this guy's dog shit. Why are we playing him? And over the last month, people are saying now, holy shit, we're going to be without Endo for a month. Fuck, what are we going to do? Oh, yeah, we've got McAllister, but like Endo, man. Like, fuck, we need Wataro Endo in the middle. This is the shit that happens. Reactionary shit like, shit like that pisses me the fuck off. Anyways, that's enough of me. My, my little rant on there. Now, Fulham were good defensively. Uh, they had their low block, stopping us playing through, played on the counter-attack and defending big, got the early lead, as I said. Realistically, probably could have said had themselves another, another goal if not for uh, a Cordoba Reid or Cordova Reid, whatever you pronounce his name. Could have squared a ball across to um, uh, to Jimenez, uh, went for goal himself, a couple of chances like that. But realistically, could have make it work. And, you know... I had chances before Jones's goal with Kanate and also Gomez coming to the defense of the team and Pura had a few you know moments up front as well looked a little bit dangerous uh, but no end product Robinson again having a decent game in the first half and so was the 30 something William again got his goal Polina was cleaning up in the midfield and you can see why he's being looked at by other clubs I think if any other team picks him up I don't think that's a bad piece of business now I have said Comebacks eventually end. I even had a video about that after the win at Palace when we won 2-1. We scored um, before the 90th minute and then in injury time. It was like, it's just like, why do we do this to ourselves? We go a goal behind and then we start to play and then we end up winning 2-1 at the end. Uh, shit ain't going to last forever. Winning within the 90 is what I want. And this was within the 90 minutes, even though we have an, a leg, uh, sorry, an, an away leg, a leg, an away leg to come, right? We still have an away leg to come. But I fancy us to make it through with more players coming back as well. Sobosla will probably be back. Trent, maybe not so much. He's probably at the end of the month. I, there'll be another video I do on the potential of this team, depending on what happens, which will be a uh, you know a, a glazing of this Liverpool squad, if you will, because let's be realistic. I think no one expected us to be anywhere where we are at the moment, and yet we are defying the odds once again at the moment again. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, more players coming back. We're a goal up. It's 2-1. Fulham away won't be easy. It's the second leg. We still have to go there again in mid-April. And if we're going to be in or around the top spot, that's going to be a pivotal match and we can't let up. So uh, a lot more football to come. And you know what? It, it, it's been good. We've got a bit of, bit of a break now. I don't think we play for uh, a while now. If I'm looking here real quick, just so you can see what I'm looking at. So Liverpool's fixtures coming up now. What have we got here? Come on, internet. Let's go. Oh, I'm ready on Liverpool. Okay, so next game is on the 22nd. So it's not for, what, two weeks? Something like that. So not this coming Monday, uh, but the Monday after. So a nice little break in between. Then we've got the away leg. And then we've got the FA Cup against Norwich or Bristol. Then uh, a few days later, again, February 1st, Liverpool, Chelsea at Anfield. So we'll look at February in the next few weeks so yeah a nice little break in between rest recovery and then we go again because we are liverpool let's fucking go